Okay, we're going to try this again. Uh, compare your how you feel physically this week to last week. Uh, <clears throat> a lot better. Feel pretty good. <clears throat> again, I asked you after the game about the offensive line, but that had to be fun just to operate like that and not yeah. have to worry. Being able to sit in there and just uh, dissect West Virginia's defense and not have to worry about anything and those guys, you know, taking care of me. Um, it was a great feeling. And just credit to those guys for the work and preparation they put in during the week last week. Game against Kansas, what's this mean to the locker room? I think the biggest thing is not overhyping it and just treating it like each and every week. Um, obviously, it's a big rivalry game. We're going to get KU's best, and um, we're going to go out on the field and, and put our best out there on display. So attacking it like pre or preparing like every other week, but um, honest, obviously this one um, means a little bit more to us. Who, who on this team you think lives for this rivalry the most? Who really is adamant that you guys have to beat KU? I feel like it's got to be like Austin Moore, um, just being from Kansas, and then uh, <clears throat> just um, you know how much he cares about K State and how much he's given to this team and how long he's been here. I think it means uh, probably the most. But there's a lot of guys that you know it means a lot too. How, how are you feeling just energy-wise after these last two road trips? I mean, we didn't even play in the games, and we're kind of tired after it. What's what, what are you feeling today? That's that's exactly what Coach True said this morning. <laughs> and he was like, man, I'm tired. I know you guys got to be tired. So um, I think first and foremost, it's just a blessing to be able to play, you know, those night games, those primetime games. Um, and I feel like we've earned that right and can play it again at, at nighttime this week. Um, so that's that's the first thing, but it is definitely exhausting going from East Coast, um, different time zones, getting back. BYU and Colorado, we got back at 5.30. Um, we got back around 3, 3.30 um, this time around. So I think the biggest thing is our coaches do take that in consideration and support staff. So they do a really good job of getting our bodies turned back around and um, making sure we get enough rest so that we're able to go out and, and perform the next week. One more real quick. What's what's made Ty Bowman a uh, good receiver for you? Um, I think just his versatility and, um, you know, how well he can uh, run block and get open. And I think that he can he can run block and, and, and block and run routes and stuff very well. So we can use him almost like, as like an extended tight end at, at times. And he's a lot more agile and athletic than a tight end. So um, – he can, he can do a lot of things, and uh, defenses have to prepare for, for all those different type of things that he can do. Your teammates are commending you for your improved leadership, you know, often mentioning that you're in the defensive huddle quite a bit now. What do you try to get across in those moments? I feel like the biggest thing is just know, knowing I'm backing those guys through whatever and um, that I have complete confidence in them. And the biggest thing is just, you know, I just try to preach to them, go get that ball back for us. Um, we'll take care of it when, when you get it back to us, and we'll do what we do. But... Just know that, hey, if we get a turnover, if, if they score, or whatever field goal, whatever it might be, offense is attacking it um, the same. And uh, just trying not to let any, any momentum shifts uh, happen, especially on the road, that, that don't work out in our favor. I think you said after the game, I saw it on video, that you mentioned I'm improving a little bit each week. And given that, I'm just curious about how well you feel like you performed this past game and how much better can you be? I feel like there's still um, a, a great amount of improvement to be made. And that's the, the great thing about football is, you know, you feel like you have a really good game, you walk off the field, um, and then you get back in the film room and you're like, man, there's still some things I can improve on. So that's the great part. I, I mean, I played um, <clears throat> a pretty good game. That's the most passing yards I've ever had in a game. But there's a lot of factors that go into it. And just being a quarterback, I know that um, receivers have to make plays. Offensive line has to do their thing. Um, and I really, really feel like it all started with uh, our run game the week prior and how well DJ and Dylan did to be able to uh, force a defense to, to have to stop that and open up a whole bunch of different passing windows for me. When I say Sunflower Showdown, what comes to mind? Um, I think it's one of the best rivalries in in college football, and uh, a lot of people overlook it, but um, Kansas is a really talented team, and, and so are we, so it should be a, a battle to remember. Peter, I wanted to ask you about Ancio and your thoughts of him. You grew up in that area close to him, and he's really come on so 
fast here in this this season. Um, yeah, I feel like um, he's he was really overlooked, and he he got his opportunity and, and took made the most of it. And you can really see a lot of his just natural athleticism, and some of it comes from you know how well of a basketball player he was. You can kind of just see that natural athleticism um, whenever the ball is thrown his way. But I mean, he has. Um, some of the best hands on the team, and I mean, he's a big six-five, six-six target to be able to put the ball up in, in places that only he can go up and get it. So he's only going to continue to improve, and you know, he's just he's a really humble guy, keeps his head down and works. And um, I'm just really, really proud of, of what he's been able to uh, put on tape the past couple of weeks. You and Jaden have also kind of developed as the season has gone along too. Can you describe what it's been like with him and his his step forward here lately? Yeah, Jay Jack's. Uh, a really smart receiver out there on the field, so it's uh, really it's always good to be able to you know connect with him because um, <clears throat> he does a really good job of, of knowing exactly where I want him to be, and I think that's starting to display as the the season goes on as our chemistry is, is building, and that's the biggest thing for me as a quarterback. Whenever I have chemistry with a guy and um, we're thinking on the on the same page and have that same wavelength, then um, that's when we start to become dangerous.